Welcome everyone into another episode of the Home Pod Office. I'm Bobby, that's Brandon, and today we are joined by the very special host of Bend the Knee podcast, Matt Brady. Matt, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm good, man. I just got off work. Uh, today's my Friday, so just uh, you know, nice. like, hey, Congrats. you know, congratulations, four, four off. So it's like, okay, boom, <laughs> yeah, ready for ready for that. Let me tell you. Well, we're Hell glad yeah. we're, we're uh, glad yeah, that you thank decided. you so much for coming to join us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was sorry. I was just saying, you know, glad you decided to extend your work week a little bit and hang out with us uh, just to kind of ruin the start oh, of that nice okay, four day yeah. weekend. <laughs> no that hey no that's fine actually you know uh fortunately you guys live in central time and you could do it early so get to come in here and knock it out and then you can catch some monday night football after that so it's perfect actually it's like perfect timing so yeah but um all right let, let's hop right into it uh today we're talking about episode four um i didn't write down the name of the episode this time because uh clearly i'm professional king of the uh, king of the narrow sea we... sorry King okay, of the Narrow, the Narrow Sea. sea. Uh, this episode uh, starts right off with uh, Rhaenyra uh, looking for her king consort, and we are introduced to a just a line of familiar names and houses. Um, we see Don Darian. Uh, we we see we, you know that's a name that I'm sure a lot of people kind of peeked up and were like, "Oh, I, I know that name." Uh, we see some Blackwoods. We see uh, so um, some Brackens. Uh, what were y'all's initial reaction to to this scene? Love seeing Storms End for the first time. I thought it was uh, I thought it was pretty cool. cool. I thought we could have get I, th- I thought we could have got a, uh, got a little more out of it um, as such a storied castle. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, we're still kind of getting that vibe from Rhaenyra that it's all just a joke to her, and it's you know, it's she's just doing this because she's been told to, and she's going to go through the motion. So. It doesn't seem like she's kind of shifted her point of view a lot would be kind of my first initial reaction to watching her, uh, watching her in there at Storm's End with the uh, Lord Baratheon. Yeah, um, like you said, yeah, it was cool to get to see Storm's End. And I think it was a good also sort of, you know, episode four, um, you know, we're getting to we're now at the point where we're beginning to flesh these characters out a little bit more. And it's something we see a lot in this episode, too, is like Rhaenyra's, uh, I guess, I don't know the word, I guess, reluctance to her duties. Right. Uh, And she kind of goes about things in her own way. And so you even get to to see a little bit more of that uh, in in this episode. Uh, And then it gets expanded upon further uh, from this opening opening scene where, hey, she's kind of put in certain positions uh, in this, you know, this episode where I think it's like eye opening for her and it all kind of starts really in this opening scene. hundred percent. And as a, you know, uh, for me personally, I'm all about house Baratheon. That is my favorite house. So I love seeing storms End. uh, love seeing that stag up there. Um, I thought it was a very fun scene, you know, like yeah, reluctancy. Uh, I was, I was leaning more towards complacency, but I think reluctant is a great, uh, word for how she's seeing this. Um, we see one of the dope scenes of uh, of young Samuel Blackwood, uh, kind of you know going into his feel about you know of the first men and how you know he uh, the, his his family helped uh, Aegon the Conqueror, and then we get you know uh, uh, Bracken over there kind of being a bit of a bully to this kid, and yeah, we saw how that ended, uh, not great for Bracken. Um, so just what an absolute great scene. Yeah, and you kind of see that as Rhaenyra is walking out, she kind of looks back and she's she's interested. She she likes kind of that she likes the drama of all this, as I would assume any 15, 16, 17 year old would doing this kind of lightens up her day a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 funny, uh, obviously, you know, if especially if you're into the books and into the the, the world. Uh, you know, you know, the Blackwood Bracken feud is a is a is a big one. Um, so. To kind of include that is is super awesome. I thought another pretty important point, even before the Blackwood uh, Bracken duel, I guess it's a duel. Why would he pull out a Why did he pull out a dagger? I'm not really sure. I mean, <laughs> he's got a sore. Uh, um, but Rhaenyra really not reading what she needs to do. Like as somebody that's going to need support at some point, 
he, she's insulting a lot of these lords too. Not just, you yeah. know, not just disinterested or reluctant, but like out outwardly calling somebody old, you know, making fun of them because they're, they're around when her grandmother was around. And it was, it was kind of odd. Even Lord Baratheon was kind of like, Hey, you know, you probably need to chill a little bit. You know, that's, uh, these are, these are your lore. These are your people, the ones that you want to kind of support you. So, um, I think the frustration kind of boiled over into the, into the suitors and know that kind of all are standing around knowing that their days of their, their days and weeks and time has been wasted. And, uh, what better, you know, opportunity to fight your, your enemy house there. Uh, and I don't know if you saw the, uh, <laughs> Lord Bracken was sitting there and he, he thought it was pretty funny when he was, when his son was getting the shots in at the, uh, at, at the Blackwood kid, but he did not think it was as funny after the Blackwood kid uh, got a hold no. of him. So <laughs> he thought it, yeah. he thought it was less funny at that point. <laughs> Matt, what do you, what about you, man? Yeah. De uh, de yeah, definitely agree. He, uh, the, the tone certainly shifted um, once it went down that way. And I, you know, th that scene was also, it was kind of surprising too, because it definitely makes it seem like, Oh, here's this little kid who's about to get, you know, wrecked. Right. And then the next thing you know, whoa. So uh, just sort of like sets the tone right immediately. Like this is still Game of Thrones, people. Yeah. Um, so like that was definitely that was definitely fun to, to see that. And then Rhaenyra being like, all right, I, I'm, I'm out. Like, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with all this. Um, so, no, it's 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 cool. And it's just something they've been doing really well. Is like the tiny little nods to like lore and like deeper stuff that they've just been doing and they did it in um you know they've done it in all the episodes really where it's like on surface level okay that's kind of a cool you know like good opening scene but there's so much more deeper stuff in there for the like hardcore book readers too so it was great great opening scene 100 percent. um so we go straight from that to um an you know, I, I overuse this phrase. It's an amazing scene. Because, I mean, let's be honest. So many of these scenes are great. But Damon returning, um, now, uh, what, King of the Narrow Sea. He's got the, the wooden crown with, with, the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the ruby in it. Um, and we are seeing uh, kind of Rhaenyra's kind of trying to hide away. We see uh, Viserys put his crown on. And just overall, just we don't know. And we, as much as everyone else, and Viserys, we don't know how this is going to go. And, well, I guess we, book readers, have a little bit, a bit of an idea. Um, but as viewers, we don't know. And he ends up bending the knee, giving him the crown. Um, and we just, we see the complicated relationship that is between Viserys and Daemon. Uh, I mean, it might not last for long in this episode, but it is, I, it was good seeing, uh, A, just, you know, Patty and Matt Smith, uh, it, you know, doing a scene together uh that's a such a great duo in this show yeah and we as we've talked about previously matt <clears throat> the when in the scene where matt smith is coming in with his crown uh the series is there with Blackfire, as usual, as usual, kind of leaning upon it and, and showing its power right front and center, you know, just to make sure everybody in this court knows, hey, you know, I've got Blackfire, everyone. Um, and, right. you know, Damon kind of doing the, the very best thing that, that you can do. He gets his shot in. Hey, well, they're calling me the, the king of the narrow sea. But nah, but not me. I would, <laughs> right. I would. I was wearing right. it here. I was wearing it here because my hands were full <laughs> earlier. Is the thing it was that was the easiest spot <laughs> for me to put it, and then easiest to hand it to you because my shoulders. I've been fly, dragging back all day, so it was. You know, he got to keep his keep a little bit of his pride by by saying in front of everybody, "Hey, this is what they're calling me." But no, no, not. I would never accept any humble uh, titles like that. So you're obviously the king of the narrow sea. I like the like the touch of the the sword, you know, add it to the pile, and uh, it was a, it was a great scene. But you know, we've we've talked about it. Viserys is, I think Viserys thinks, you know, so highly of family. Not that Targaryens normally don't, but in a more traditional sense, where he doesn't look at Daemon of how he could advance the House of Targaryen as much as he does love for Daemon as a brother. 
And so just having him back in the, in the fold for him is, you know, you know, time after time with Damon, I think the series is always hopeful. Hey, this is the time that he's not going to get too power hungry and he's going to, going to help me out and help me rule the rule, rule the round. So I think it's a, uh, you know, a, a both the good, good, you know, relief for Viserys, but also that kind of in the back of his head, knowing that, Hey, this is probably going to cause me a little bit of problems, uh, coming up. Yeah. And I think it was good to show that, um, them actually being like pleasant towards each other because at the, up, up to this point, you know, it's been kind of like, Hey, I've defended you, but you spurned me. So we needed that, that like a camaraderie sort of scene, uh, but between the, t- between them, t- between the two. And, uh, then also really for me, the highlight of that scene was like what comes towards the end of it, or as, as you start sort of shifting, uh, when Alicent comes up and she's like, oh, well, there's oh, yeah. this, like art gallery with tapestries. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we could go see it. And, and Viserys is like, oh, yeah, let's say you really want to go see, you know, like, it's like <laughs> super cool. Yeah. So funny. Like, so funny. Yeah. So, yeah it was, it, it, that's literally it very Damon's natural of thing. like brothers. <laughs> how brothers act. To do. Oh, my God. How'd yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that, that was great um, and you could tell it tell at that point where you get to kind of see his frustration uh with with rainera as well where he's normally not so yeah uh so snappy with her where he's like uh where she's like well i kind of wanted to see him he's like well then go see him if you want i don't really care you know kind of just uh right. you know yeah do it do it yeah. by yourself then i mean you know? yeah i mean <laughs> For the past, like, at this point, it ha- it's years, you know, Viserys lives his day wondering how his brother and his daughter might screw up his day, and he's finally having a decent day, and he's just like, please, please, don't, don't bring me down somebody, right now. Let's somebody not, ha- let's not somebody, have another tragedy today. His wife had just told the funniest joke she's ever told. He's like, you know, Damon wanting to go see the art pieces and the tapestries, and he was, he was cackling over that. He thought that was good, man. He was that, right. he, you know. <laughs> Right. He thought that was a three fingered <laughs> knee slapper right there. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> All right. Uh, um but yeah, no that that you know, going into that scene, I think that scene uh immediately led into the conversation between uh Rhaenerys and Allison where they kinda this is kind of the last conversation that they have really as friends, I guess, uh that we see them talking about how um oh you know we're trapped in this tower and uh you know our only in the job only job is to have kids and now allison you know this is a couple years i think what uh, i don't know how many how much time has passed since the tournament i don't i i think not much uh a couple since of, the, is it a, a year? since her a since her dad days? since her dad not no I mean, not since, since the tournament since the mom since oh the uh about six months uh, right since the she home. was two three months she yeah, was months, uh, she was about two months into like a six month tour yeah that sound about so, right i mean yeah it, yeah I mean, it's not super um, super yeah, so long it, it was no but yeah so it, it was not long before then that you know alice it was all about oh having kids is so easy it's so much fun i love doing this and now she's starting to realize oh this kind of sucks yeah like uh so that that you know that dynamic w- was good to <clears throat> see especially you know what's coming soon um which we'll get to what we all's opinion a oh and one thing i was want to talk about was uh uh rain uh Rhaenyra's and damon kind of speaking valerian kind of just out in the open it is cool to see how like how these targaryens interact and how they the they're targaryens and that's what makes them different than all these other people is they can just have these full-on conversations in valerian and you know they can talk about shit that they probably normally wouldn't talk about out in public um and that really bring you know kind of in the, well i would say it does put them a step above you know everyone else yeah i usually say that's the dragons and not the two languages but you know i i can i can agree <laughs> with some of your points there that uh that, that i mean they have this they carry this air about them you know all all of them um yeah. but to your point on on Allison and Rhaenyra speaking um, you know, it really does feel like, okay, some of that friendship had been renewed. There seemed to be some genuine 
hey, I'm glad you're, you know, um, you know, is he mad? Is he going to be mad? He's like, ah, he's probably going to be, a, you know, a little, a little miffed at you uh, to be to be truthful. Uh, but hey, but I am glad you're home. And, you know, I'm glad to be home. And it seemed like, hey, you know, maybe some inroads have been repaired in that that short period before uh, that hunt re- really kind of helped, you know, settle some things, you know, kept murdering a boar that attacks you is very, very cathartic. You know, you're able to release a lot of the demons that maybe <laughs> she'd been kind of carrying around. Um, and I think especially once her father had said, you know, marry for love, just like I did, you know, do it, do whatever you need to do, but you got to have somebody. I think that kind of released some tension on Allison. Uh, but you do kind of see that relationship repaired uh, a little bit or on the mend from what we had seen it previous. Yeah. Yeah. And, and their relationship too, because it's, you know, the most important relationship in the entire show because it's like the whole thing um yeah. you, you know it's i think it's easy this season to really have the focus be on like around viserys um just because like he's alive uh and he, uh you know that's not the case for the whole certainly the whole event but um you know like the alicent renew relationship dynamic is the whole thing and so it is that we've we've had this sort of like teetering back and forth. Uh, and so to get it, yeah, this is going to be one of the last conversations they sort of have uh, as as friends, because really their whole relationship is going to kind of break loose, uh, you know, in the, in the following weeks. Yeah. Um, so. We move forward now to uh, Rhaenyra sneaking out. Uh, she she has these notes uh, written in a lot of Valerian, uh, you know, with all these, you know, maps of secret passageways, which is kind of creepy that your uncle kind of has a map of where your bed of your bedroom and stuff in your bed. Uh, but I guess it's one of the least creepy things in this episode. They uh, did for, say he was going to be the next. They, <laughs> they did say he was going to be the next Magor if he ever got on the throne. I'm pretty sure that's who installed all of the secret passages and stuff inside the, the Red yeah. Keep. Is that is that correct? It was Magor that kind of revamped mm-hmm. the security yeah, yeah. system the uh the red keep yeah. security uh, brought him in and then murdered all of them after they built them so uh, nobody so um <laughs> so that he was so that he was the only one who would know, so he's yeah. the only one yeah and then i mean yeah. i guess a very select few people he told he's like hey check this out <laughs> you know he gets a little drunk and he's like you want to see something dope yeah i mean he's you're bragging like, about those just, passageways he's like <laughs> popping open he hits a brick and it just like a whole door opens he's like yeah I'm, i killed like six guys to make that so no big deal <laughs> uh, but yeah love you know always love the kind of re- reference back to these these secret passages and you know where all they're going to be uh, and getting to see her go down and, and kind of go into the night and kind of see what the people that she she's going to rule um are seeing and getting to do every, every night <clears throat> with yeah. with Damon. Um, one thing i yeah one thing i really liked was uh something small but just seeing her leave the uh the 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 tomb area where uh you know where like Balerion's uh skull is because i mean that is that area is one of the final scenes in a game of thrones with cersei and jamie we get to finally see where in like i was always under the impression that it was like underground it was like a underground tomb but now and obviously i'm wrong it's high up above it go it goes down you leave you go down a stairway you go right down Uh, so i kind of like seeing giving us kind of a, a real world where it is in King's Landing uh, and, you know, well, it's, it, it's the, not underground. Well, it's in the Red Keep, which is up above. So, I mean, it is underground yeah. from yeah. the... Well, I always assumed it, well, yeah, I always assumed it was like in the under... I always assumed it was like right. in the mountain. Like, like under, you're going like, down towards, the, gotcha. towards sea level. Yeah, yeah well, especially um, because so, in, in Game of Thrones, there's a, there's a scene where Arya in like season one goes down and she's like hiding inside of a dragon skull. It's not Balerion's dragon skull. Right. It's a different one, but it's still like this massive skull. And so then like, that's the only time you ever actually even see that like scene uh, and that, and that angle. And so then later they reference it. So a lot of people will, like, it's just easy in your mind to be like, to think it's like the same place, although it's not. Right. Yeah. Didn't we also see it uh, when they were testing out the uh, ballista? On, yep. Didn't they test that on Balerian skull? On Balerian skull and it cracks it. Yeah. Yeah. 
which I mean, if you're going to test it, well, I mean, I mean, even if you don't care about the dragons, I feel like test it on any other skull right. there. I mean, well, that's if, it, just, if, it's, if it'll go through Balerian skull, it'll definitely. Crack yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it, it was just the best. Uh, the, uh, the skull is like this. The skull is Balerian skull is like the size of Drogon. So, yeah. Imagine being the, the Grand Maester who's in charge of like keeping track of all like the uh, the yeah, collectibles. Right. And he's like, oh, man, <laughs> these, <laughs> these Lannisters and Baratheons are killing me. The historian, <laughs> oh, the historian guy comes around and he's like, has Kyburn been around? He's like, yeah. He's like, <sighs> he just like walks off. He's like, I'm going to take a sick. <laughs> I'm going to take a sick day, man. I can't get yelled at for this again. Like, this is just too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But uh, so we end up seeing throughout uh, King's Landing and we see it one, for one of the I think this might be the first time that we actually see like the nightlife of King's Landing, because I've usually in all the, every other scene we've seen King's Landing, it's when Joffrey's going through or it's the uh, the the, uh, the faith militant uh, have taken over. So this is we'll the first time brothels, we're seeing it. Like, we've seen and brothels, but um, yeah, we've seen some brothels, seen but we've never seen it like 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 it, it's like a carnival going on, and it's right. the full on like it, it's like going through Vegas, you know. So it it was it was really cool seeing all that, you know, seeing the uh, the jesters, you know, seeing all these people just like having fun out there, and getting to see Rhaenyra's, you know, her reaction to seeing this probably for what is the first time ever. What was yeah. y'all's uh, thoughts on getting to see the, uh, that side of King's Landing? Yeah, it was sick. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, no, it, yeah, it, ahead, yeah, it was definitely cool because, uh, yeah, as, as you guys, as you said, really, if you think about it in Game of Thrones, yeah, it's usually we go to brothels or like nightlife is the things we see at night are involved like guards and they're going down to round round somebody up or it's like somebody sneaking in. I think that, yeah, that is the first time we see specifically like King's Landing with uh some sort you know kind of like people party flea bottom basically in like a little opium you know whorehouse step yeah exactly the what 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 the locals would call the real flea bottom you know not where all the tourists come into right. town <laughs> yeah. for, for the tournaments and stuff like we're out here living life here at, at repping fb down here you know uh let's drink in yeah. drink in and and whore in in the streets we don't need no brothel there's a per perfectly good alley or a man's fruit stand right beside me so i don't need you know yeah. uh uh but I, I you know i loved it i i really really enjoyed them uh damon taking her to the play i think it's always super interesting because we got a little bit of, you know the play aspect from the from the commoners in game of thrones uh and kind of seeing this play and seeing what they actually think of her and and we see you know one of what you know can be per perceived as a weak spot and what can be one of Rhaenyra's downfalls is her her pride and her unwillingness to understand that common people do help make choices you know whether you believe it or not they're not in the in the small council chamber making a choice but i guarantee you if nobody can leave the castle and they're you know stealing all the food that's coming in that makes choices for you so for her to say wow well, like i care what they'll say you know they'll listen to me because i'm the queen is almost kind of a slap in the face to what you thought you know she knew about leadership because that's a fundamental misunderstanding that yeah i don't right. have to they don't I, don't I don't have to have you know do exactly what they want but their feelings matter a little bit as long as they're down here having fun and partying down here we're all good but it's when they're not able to do that that they can cause a problem for you. So even Damon kind of tells her, you know, you can jest all you want, but, uh, but just so you know, like you're going to be, if you want to be their queen, you need to understand who they are and what motivates them. Uh, like yeah. any good leader should. Yeah. It's, uh, it's ultimately a good move. I mean, you know, for whatever reasons it, it, that at least that portion of the, of the trip was, <laughs> uh, you know, was, was good. A uh, hundred percent. Yeah, I was, you know, I was watching the scene. I was thinking, man, this is one of the first times that someone's actually sitting down with her and being like, all right, he like being a leader is not just sitting on a throne with black fire and telling people what to do. You're going to have to, you know, think of the people and, and, you know, realize that you're like, yeah, your power is in your dragon, but it's not just that. And yeah. obviously that 
you know, the, the lesson kind of changes here in a minute. Uh, and Rainice it gets had a, to, uh, to, but to, I, your, <laughs> to your point, Bobby, Rainice had a dragon. Okay. She still has a dragon. I mean, you can have a dragon yeah. and not be, you know, <laughs> the, the queen. So just so, just so we're clear yeah. about everything. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now we move on to the brothel scene, which, um, you know, I, I think a lot of us who knew the books knew if this was eventually coming. I didn't think it was happening this early on. Um, and obviously it was probably the most talked about scene of the episode, probably of the season. I think a lot more um, while the battle of episode three was absolutely amazing. Uh, the way that this scene was done was very, was very good. You, you, they because they could have gone full HBO and just been taking it too far. Um, but I I think they they took they they did it right in this. Um, obviously, we see uh, them starting to get physical. Uh, so I guess the question is, you know, because, again, this show, much like the book, is a lot of, you know, maybe this happened this way. Maybe it didn't happen. Do you think that they did the deed or do you think that they no, stopped no. early? No, they definitely stopped early in my mind um, because it that, seemed like yeah, Damon. I agree. Well, Damon, Damon was trying to teach her in my mind in a weird Damon Targaryen type of way, trying to teach her a lesson. <laughs> we've already, you know, we've already seen we've already seen her at the at the play and him trying to, you know, give his wisdom off to her. Um, and then we see him at the brothel and he's almost trying to, you know take advantage or you know pull her in like make sure he's in control and you know then she i think she does kind of a very damon targaryen thing back to him and kind of starts to dig it and that kind of takes the power dynamic away from damon in my mind when he so he kind of right you know yeah. bounces off he's like all right well this really isn't f as fun as I, I had previously anticipated yeah. um with my uh with my niece so i'm gonna I'm going to peace out, homie, you know, I'm getting out of here. So, um, right. yeah, so I didn't think they, I mean, not, not that time specifically. And especially, I think it, that's evident following up with what she does uh, after the, yeah. after the fact is, is makes it very clear, yeah. makes it very clear that she goes in with a, we could say an appetite, I guess, is the probably the right word. She runs back in and Sir Kristen Cole right. is there and uh, she, you know, does what a younger girl will do to tease somebody. Oh, take your helmet. Let's, you know, uh, let's kind of, you know, oh, you got to come back in to get it. And so, so, so do, I mean, she's a good looking girl and he's always kind of looked at looked at her in a, a different light. So I think that that makes it kind of clear that she never soiled herself uh as they as they say uh as Otto Hightower would say <laughs> uh Matt what are your thoughts on the brothel scene yeah uh well exactly I definitely don't think that they went they didn't nearly go you know the whole way because I think that is you know one of the reasons she goes back and um is so I guess I don't know what the, what the word I'm looking for frustrated is, but... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, she's frustrated uh, is definitely a word for it. And then um, that's why she is like, well, Kristen Cole, you get in here, right? Your your turn, um, <laughs> you, I guess. You looking yeah, good, yeah. I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, same. Th yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely agree with what you guys are saying. You know, she she goes into the brothel and then Damon's showing him sort of Damon is showing her again a different kind of side of everything. Uh, and then, you know, it's sort of also a weird power play where he wants to be sort of in, you know, control of the situation. And then I think once she starts to take control a little bit, I think then he is less, I don't know. Yeah. Like he is, he's, he's less into it. I think, I think he's into it. I think that the reason it doesn't happen is we've seen now a couple of times. I think he has it, I, whether it's an issue with impotence. I mean, we see right. in the most recent episode, uh, some further proof of that we see in one of the earlier episodes where she's like, do you want me to bring in someone with blonde hair? Like, uh, right. so we, this is not the first time we've seen him have issues. And I think that, you know, as many Targaryens have issues in a lot of different ways, 
that the moment, and I think you're both right, the moment she takes control, he's like, mm, nope, this boils um, down. I'm, I'm losing it here. Boils um, down to their to his power. You kind of see it in every scene, in that very first scene that we see Damon when he's got my he he's you know going to town on my area. He's he's good for a bit, but then you can kind of see he's inside of his head. He's thinking about you know what he's gonna you know do when he goes to the red keep and the, and so kind of every scene that you kind of see that, that I don't, I don't know that it's impotence as much as it is just like, uh, this isn't, this isn't gratifying for him, me, you know, like I'm doing, I'm going through the motions and, you know, yeah. Hooking up with these girls. I don't know if hook up is the right word of banging girls and brothels, but hooking up with these girls in <laughs> just because I'm supposed to, because I'm Damon Targaryen and I'm, you know, the prince of the city. Uh, you know, I'm just this guy that's supposed to do this stuff. It, it doesn't seem as though, I mean, at any real, at any real point that we've seen Damon have any type of enjoyment of anything that he's doing, except for when he's on, on the tourney uh, and when he's in the tourney and when he's talking with, with, Rhaenyra or when he's talking with Viserys alone uh you yeah. know his family not Viserys with Otto around yeah. or he's not talking to the king he's getting to talk to his brother uh so I mean it's just uh yeah I think that is a I think that's a great point especially about Damon as a character because I don't think Damon wants the throne I think Damon wants to be I don't think he does either parallel to the throne he he want he want, he wants to be in the game he wants to be in the room where it happens. Like he doesn't like to be at, you know, at, at in the veil. He doesn't want to be uh, not on the council. He wants. Well, he, no, it's he, not even the he, council. He, he wants he want, to be able to say I'm here. He wants to be the hand. He of the wants king. to be the hand. That's he, it. He, yeah. He, he can't. Yeah. He, he won't suffer. He yeah. won't suffer anybody else's opinion. You know, he, he wants people's opinions and he's able to make good decisions, but he wants to feel like he's guided that decision, not Otto Hightower guiding somebody yeah. to that decision. Yeah. But Damon, but he doesn't want the consequences of bad decision, right. of bad decision making happen on him. He wants to be able to say, oh, OK, well, I'm the power behind the curtain, not the power in front exactly. of the curtain. Right. Yeah. And he definitely he definitely would not want to actually be king because he wouldn't want any of the yeah. weight that comes with it. But yeah, oh, it is no. a control. It's definitely a control thing, because remember, in episode three, as soon as Viseri sends a letter that's like, hey, I'm going to send you aid. He yeah. like freaks out. Yeah. He's like, yeah. no, no, I will not take it. I really, really yeah. quickly. Like, I want like, to know we're ending this now because then yeah. he can have he could have won it on his terms. He's like, either I'm going to die um, and right that actually... now or we're winning. <laughs> I just want to. Yeah, I, I did want to say uh, real quick, Bob, I wanted to talk real quick about, you know, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not I can't buy this whole. Wow. You know, he Chris and Cole was kind of seduced into this. And do you know how long it would take would have taken him to take off that armor? He had like 45 oh. minutes. He had like yeah, 45 right. minutes to change his mind. Yeah. Okay? It's why I'm saying, like, look, that was a conscious yeah. decision. Yeah, man. even <laughs> even in yeah, even in Dungeons and Dragons, to take off heavy plate mail takes like ten minutes to don off and right. on armor. Like that's, that takes a minute. That's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> like, so like, my boy was like, uh, I don't know, but in his mind, he's already plotting the best like order in which to take things off. He's like, gotta go chest plays off first, so I got the mobility here. You yeah. know, he's already thought about it. Yeah. Like to be fair, he is. He, he is a Dornish man, so he may have like a he might have built like a like a trap thing that he could just pull and it all just falls off in one minute. Yeah, right. Just, I mean, because this Dornish dude be like that, just, just falls off, <laughs> just falls off, and he's naked. He was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. This yeah. is actually he's doubled. Got, yeah, I got a. I, yeah. you know, they don't pay me a lot. Yeah, so it's rip, it's job. rip away armor. I got a second job at Flea Bottom. So, <laughs> uh, but um, but oh uh, yeah, so that kind of takes us right into the next scene of uh, Misaria. You know, we see this kid run and give the news that he sees uh, uh, Rhaenyra's and Damon in a brothel. This is the same kid we see uh, in the room with Missaria, who we find out is the White Worm. So we kind of have a triangle here of the White Worm re uh, reporting to Otto. Is, um, is Damon using Missaria knowingly? to feed some information to Otto, or do you think that he's out of the loop and she's uh she's feeding information about uh damon without him knowing or do you think it's a little bit of both and it's all just kind of a mess both it's definitely both 
Yeah. 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 No, she's definitely playing her own game on the side for sure. Yeah. I think she's yeah. high, um, highest bidder. You know, whoever, whoever's willing to pay her the most yeah. is the, is the person that gets whatever they need from her. Yeah. Um, there has been a rumor that I've seen on some Reddit and some places where people are saying that uh, Damon took Rhaenyra's to the brothel, knowing that the rumor would get back and it would cause Otto to kind of push his, you know, show his cards a little bit and, you know, push the envelope a little bit. And then that would result in Otto getting, you know, thrown off. Personally, I don't like that because whereas Otto is a Damon and Otto are both very, very skilled at playing the game in both different ways. Uh, Otto, I believe, is very thought out. He is three steps ahead of everyone all the time, except with for Damon. And I think we see that a lot where Damon is a master tactician in the moment. Well, he Damon, can, when, it, when something pops up, he is able to say, all right, here's how I can use that to my advantage right now. And that's a wild card. And Otto ha- can't prepare for a wild card. And that's why he, he doesn't want Damon anywhere near uh, Viserys. Yeah, I think you answered. I think Damon is Damon doesn't play the game traditionally, and therefore he's not predictable. What a guy like Jason Lannister is going to do is always predictable. Jeez. He thinks he's the he <laughs> thinks he's the hot shot on campus. He is most certainly going to come to uh, come to Viserys and try to get his daughter's hand in in marriage. We probably all could have you know if we were all playing the Game of Thrones, that's what Jason Lannister would do. Whereas Damon, I'm sure they had a pool on it. <laughs> oh my goodness. There was guys like, told you, told you, like, you know, like got it three <laughs> weeks, dude, three weeks. And that was with the Raven that went down, you know? So, I mean, I definitely won. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, Damon is so un unpredictable. <clears throat> and so you, I mean, that's a, that's a rumor that's going around. I think that that has some viability. And, and the reason for that is kind of skipping to the scene where they have, uh, right after this scene with Masaria, where they drag it, where they're dragging Damon in to meet with the king, and uh, you know he comes in with Blackfire and gives him, uh, as usual, has Blackfire on and gives him a good swift kick and a couple of kicks. I think it could, there could be some truth to it based on how he answered. He never denied when he said she's soiled. You know, you've taken you know taken her honor or whatever. Um. He never denies it, but he's just like, well, then wed her to me. And, you know, I think that's ultimately his ultimate plan was he wants to be wed to Rain, uh, to Rhaenyra, uh, because I think that's who he really wants to be wed to. Like, truly not yeah. no power, no power play, nothing and nothing yeah. to do with anything other than what actually wanting her. Um, and so we get to see that fun, that fun little scene. But we didn't mention Otto going in and telling Viserys uh the the news <laughs> and the very the, be- the best so part funny. is who checks who doesn't who doesn't check like the other room like you're given some of the most sensitive information that's ever been i mean and maybe he did it on purpose because it was his daughter but who doesn't check the you know check the back room for for extra people but yeah telling them about the uh, and so Allison getting to hear that really, really changes this story. I think Matt mentioned it earlier that the dynamic between Allison and Rhaenyra is is so vital to this whole story, not just this yeah. episode or anything, but literally the whole story. Her hearing this information is pretty is is pretty damning for Rhaenyra and the and the future of that that relationship that we seem to think was getting on the men's early on in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, well, Damon knows, and I think I think he he knows. I think he's he's in, you know he's interested in Rhaenyra from the get go. I think he's interested in her because if he he knows, hey, if he marries her, then there's a lot of things. Like even just in like episode one, like you know they, there's a, a a little you can tell there's like a little thing between them um, because then it gives him a Valyrian wife. It also gives him. Uh, it strengthens his claim to the throne. It strengthens his, his claim to the throne even more so once uh, Rhaenyra is named heir. And then it's even more vital once young Aegon is born. So it's like there's that. Then also he is still kind of obsessed with this idea of Aegon the Conqueror and having multiple wives. So he has that. So there's a lot of dynamics be- behind uh 
egg or Damon wanting to marry Rhaenyra. Yeah, I I think we see a lot throughout this just how pivotal the Targaryen name is to Damon. That at the end of the day, above wanting power, you know, and and we even see it in the most recent episode, which we're not talking about today, but we hear the term a couple times already, a second age of dragons, which spoiler alert for we we know doesn't we, we don't get a second age of dragons because of what's coming up in the next couple decades um but it, it's so vital both both brothers recognize how vital the dragons are to this family and they need to keep it strong both you know literally with dragons that breathe fire and figuratively of the targaryen bloodline and it, and it, it is cool to see the difference between daemon and someone like Viserys who is willing to marry a high tower or a uh, or an Aaron. That's so. That's so. Uh, such a good point. I mean, it's it seems like a family like this that wants this dynasty. It seems like the one thing that they're not concerned enough about. Forget heirs and forget who's taken over the throne. It just does not seem like they're very interested in propagating the entirety of the Targaryen line, which we can see at some points. You know, is. Both a good thing and right. a bad thing, I guess, depending on you know where it's where it's propagated. But there are not many Targaryens uh, around right now. I mean, what I think in, in yeah. the world there's a five. <clears throat> if we're talking about actual Targaryens got- and not including the Valerians, um, you know, with the with right. the with the Valerian heritage, yeah, there's you got Rhaenys, you got Viserys, you got Rhaenyra, Daemon, and Aegon. I don't. I, mean, got- I don't know how many. Uh, yeah, Aegon. Okay, yeah. Aegon. I don't know. So I don't know, but I don't know how many of uh, Viserys, uh, Viserys's um, and then, uncles and aunts are still alive. Okay, um, so that's something I don't know. But yeah, they're, I think, they're they're, I, think lot, I think though. that's why. Yeah, I th- yeah. Because yeah, I mean, I think that's two... why the choices were between Rhaenys and Viserys for King. Yeah, and Queen. that's what I'm saying. That's there were, why. Right. Um, there were many good choices available. So. Uh, it just seems it just seems weird. I guess I guess Helena at this point is probably born uh, in this episode, or is that uh, are we still waiting for Helena Targaryen? I think, I think, that, uh, I think, I think that's going to happen during the big time jump. That's coming. yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So I mean, and so into next but, episode. And another thing, you yeah, and you're talking about propagating Targaryens. You know, for for these dudes who keep saying the age of dragons, motherfuckers, get your dragons out there. You know, get them mating. Get get them out of a pit. Stop putting them in a pit. Let them. This is a panda go, let them situation. Go be up in mountains. This is know? a panda situation. I think. I yeah. think it's like they're trying, but like they don't know. They're like, I'm not. You know, I don't know how to. She's cute, but I don't know. I don't I mean, know I think, about her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, but I mean, was it was it Aegon or Magor who built the fire pit? Oh, not uh, the fire pit. Right. The dragon pit. Sorry. Yeah, the dragon pit. Whoever built probably. the dragon pit, I mean, that's a huge fuck up right there. That's prob- that was probably Magor. I mean, let me look. That. I'll look it up. Because, I, say I mean, they have to well. know by now that caging them up is going to make them smaller and make them unhappy. That these are creatures that you can barely but the, control. But Don't let a bunch of dudes who can just speak Valerian handle them all the time. Well, but it's it was Magor. Yeah. I mean, yep. Magor that's, is that's a, Magor. Yeah, Magor is the one who's, is who's, who's responsible for the the red keep and like the expansion of the red keep and um the dragon yeah and he's and he's magor the cruel let's not forget like he didn't care about anybody pat he didn't care i mean i i have no real knowledge of this but i would have to imagine if i was a maester there on the time it's like he don't give an f about nobody dude he doesn't care he doesn't care about yeah, well, the targaryen the first, line well, the first, and the dynamic well the first thing the first the first thing magor does is fly out is is you know when as he flies over to the Sept of Baylor and kills the like Grand Maester. He like, don't I'm give in a charge F. now. There's nothing you're going to do about it. Uh, he don't give an F about nothing. So I don't think yeah. he cared. I don't even think he really thought about yeah. it. He's like, oh, my my ancestors are going to have small dragons. I better I better change them. Change my ways. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, yeah. He didn't care. Yeah. But if I, yeah, I mean, at some point uh, and I guess, you know, it's one of those things where as, as readers, we know what's going to we know what's coming. So like we but may, maybe they didn't know that locking up their dragons makes them smaller. I mean, they're coming off of right. one. They're one generation uh, off from the Black Dread. 
So they're like, I mean, to be honest, we kind of want them a little bit smaller. That well, was a hard, that was inconvenient dealing with Balerion. <laughs> and Vagar and Vagar is still out there. I mean, as far as anybody knows. So I mean, it's yeah. not like it's not like uh, it's crazy to conceive that these dragons live so long that you can't even really conceive that there wouldn't be any more of them because by the time yeah. that there isn't, you know, it's too late. You know, as uh, by the time you know, y- you know. Yeah. Um. Um, all right, so we now see the uh, Rhaenyra's and Alicent confrontation where, let's just be honest, uh, great acting in this scene from both parties, but uh, 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 Rhaenyra re- just knocks it out of the park with just lying through her teeth. The, like, and she, she didn't is lie, so, like, though. She didn't she lie. May, she may make some... She I didn't mean, lie. Uh, Damon touched her. Uh, yeah. No, Damon ah, touched her. <laughs> no, no, touch, touched is you're talking about touched in our type of way, like it was physically touched. She meant touched, like meaning she was deflowered, my friend. So no, she didn't lie to her because she okay. swore on her. She swore on her mother that Damon never touched her. Right. Look, little bit. Look, dude, I'm sorry, Bobby, but you need to grow up, man. A little bit of making out between a, <laughs> between, a, between an uncle and a niece in a brothel in in right. in flea bottom. I mean, grow up, man. Like, get woke, buddy. It happens a little bit, okay? So, I mean, just chill <laughs> on that. <laughs> but um, one thing. I will be honest, this whole scene, I'm very confused. Like, okay, say, say they did bang. What exactly is Allison's biggest issue here? Is it simply because it's people know uncle and niece? No, people knowing. So it feels like it was. I I I feel like I think. I think because it ultimately hurts Viserys. Sure, but I feel like then her issue should be like on and then be like hey you know no. how nobody would know this if my it, dad wasn't spying on you it, no but it goes back right. to but no but it ultimately goes back to the beginning of the episode alicent has outside of her own f- and her family's ambitions kind of gone out on a limb multiple times for rainiera and said something about well rain you know like in front of lots of lots of different you know ladies of different houses that Rhaenyra is the heir, that she doesn't want Aegon to be the heir. You know, she it's not it's not like that with her. And she's gonna and she probably went out on a limb for her and went to bat for her when she came home early from her from her tour, and all of these things that she's done for her friend. It's kind of I mean you know just going out and to flea bottom and bang, banging your uncle. It's uncouth, man. You know, it's kind of it's it's like, man, I've really went bat. I went to bat for you, yeah. And you do, and you do this to me. So I think that's yeah, if really you're gonna bang your uncle, mostly, you got to do it in the red keep, right? Ju- I, I mean, don't let just fine keep if you bang your key, uncle. Just don't let people know about it. And, I mean, you know yeah. exactly. I mean, but um, that's ultimately, the, I think that the bigger problem is now people knowing about it affects her and everything she said and where it puts her in a weird position. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest problem for for Allison. Yeah. Um, and to go, um, I believe that it, uh, yeah, the, the dagger scene is after this, uh, where, uh, Damon is, uh, you know, drunk, you know, hung over, brought to, um, you know, the throne room earlier when you said that he, that the series had black fire. I'll have to watch it again. I, for some reason thought he didn't, but you're, you're probably right. Um, cause I, I remember thinking at the time that this scene I liked the scene because this is this this is what sh- how it should have happened when Damon said the prince for a day. This was not a show to me. This was Viserys being a king and being mad. genuinely pissed off at his brother coming in, and he didn't make a show out of it. It's him, it's just the two of them. The, the he the, the the guards left. He didn't need a bunch of guys there to back him up. He didn't need Blackfire. He I think came he in, had Blackfire him, and, he, and then he set it get, down. He puts the to... dagger. Okay, okay, because I know he put the dagger up. To, and one thing about this scene also is that we see uh, we see the scar on uh, Damon from, and which kind of tells me uh, maybe maybe Damon's not a true dragon because he's got a, a fire burn from when he took that arrow to the neck. And oh, fire don't fire don't burn no, a dragon. No, it's not. They're just more fire resistant. I mean, they they're not fireproof. 
Like they're not, you know, he's not Johnny. Johnny, what is it? Uh, Daenerys <laughs> seemed pretty fire. Daenerys is pretty fireproof. Yeah, she is. yeah, for sure. The whole fireproof she's... business, though, is yeah, is it's like it's like pretty rare. Like yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. for for that to happen, yeah. Yeah, I do wonder. I don't. I wonder <laughs> if there is a track of which Targaryens were true dragons like Daenerys. I don't know if that's something, uh, information that w- that's in, in Fire and Blood or maybe the world of Ice and Fire. Uh, I would be interested to, just, to find that out. Well, I mean, um, fi- Fire and Blood. Because I mean, you John, have to think even it, John isn't even John isn't fireproof. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you got to think at one proof. point, maybe back in Old Valyria, they were like, all right, guys, we're going to we're going to pick our king and queen by whoever's fireproof. And they're like, guys, we got to stop doing this all way right. too much. Not enough. Not nearly enough people are fireproof. We got to stop right. picking people who lead. with. <laughs> There's got to be a better way. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a very but to go to the actual uh, scene. I thought it was a very important scene, obviously retconning in more wonderfulness about this about this dagger that started this journey for all of us a lot of us you know some people were book readers before the show i was not you know i'm a i'm a big you know nerd culture guy and so i watched the show and then i I became a book reader so more about this dagger you you learn but we also get the line that damon has been saying to the series the whole the whole series but finally it got through to to the series all right i'll get you know i'll get married as she said as she says to to sir leno or i'll do my duty but you gotta do something about that vulture that parasite sitting up on that throne with you man like yeah. you, you got to the old boy is just sitting there yeah. taking advantage of you and steering you whichever way you know you talk all about the targaryens being the the powerhouse but it seems like house hightower is the is the king right now and kind of going whichever way that suits them so uh, finally, somebody has has said that um, to Viserys, and it kind of stuck. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, quick question, and this is kind of maybe going off topic a little bit. Do you think the cat's paw dagger is going to be as important in the rest of the books when we get them uh, as it is in the show? I mean, that's hard to hard to say with George. I mean, right. yeah, George has George has seemed to kind of steer what he want what he wants to, wanted to do in the future, kind of based on things that have already happened and responses he's got to things like, oh, people figured out some things, so let's maybe steer the core. So maybe I mean, uh, I mean, with the with the amount of of screen time it's getting on this show, I mean, you have to think there's something more to this dagger. Than, than we even know um i mean yeah. i mean we know yeah. that they perhaps be, put a little teaser for the john snow show yeah when we know D D had some loose guidings of what george wanted to do so i mean you know despite whether you like the the last season or not and how it actually went i i, I would imagine that that's just a you know scrunched up version of kind of what george wanted to lay out on the on the table you know and um, so the, the thought process that that dagger is the one that kills the night King is not only not inconceivable, but, pro- but more probable than anything. I mean, he probably knew that from the time he wrote game of Thrones, this is going to be carry through. So, I mean, I would imagine, yeah, absolutely. I think it has, has, yeah. a, has a lot to do with something. Yeah. I mean, it's also the cover of the books. Right. I mean, like even some of the older yeah. edition books and stuff like that, like it is like the thing that's on the cover of the first book. Um, and it, it heavily involves Bran, who was like the whole George's whole idea for this entire book series comes from the opening scene where it's Bran standing yeah. there with Ned Stark as as Ned Stark, you know, kills a. Uh, Did, you know, kills, I mean, he literally kills desert, created kills the Night's Watch or certain. He created that thing, like little short story, right? And yeah, that created, that's, that's, went off, that's went off the whole deal. So amazing, dude. Bran is like super important, and as is the the cat's paw dagger. It's also important to note that George is way more involved in this yeah. show than he was yes. in Game of Thrones. So he, the fact that they are yeah, featuring that, yeah. it multiple times, I think, is is significant. When he said, I think oh, he said in yeah, it. I'm, I think he said uh, in it. 
interviews, interviews that saying like, yeah, like the history books, you're never going to be able to get it all. But like what's happening in the show is what I intended to happen. So, I mean, you know, there was always that speculation right. about Sir Kristen Cole. Did they ever hook up? Did they ever get together? Well, now we know. I mean, that's right. not something that was in the history yeah. book, but something that we get to know. I think that's super awesome. I love that. I mean, because like that's what Fire and Blood is. And that's what the, the world of Ice and Fire is, is. They're history books. They're written to be history books. And I think that makes it better, not worse, that they're a little yeah, different right. than the shows. Yeah, specifically that this is a history book written from different perspectives, perspectives right. that we as a viewer need to realize might not be a hundred percent how it went down. And we see that with, you know, like the, the, you know, the Prince for a day thing, you know, and that's what, that's what adds, you know, that kind of, you know, black, you know, kind of grayish area that makes this show so good, I think. Um, so we're coming up on about an hour, uh, you know, this, the, one of the final scenes, uh, you know, where, you know, Otto and, uh, Viserys kind of are, is confronts each other. And, you know, he calls him out, you know, Allison was, was a, was a distraction. It was a good distraction. And he, you know, he, he's happy. Maybe he's happy that distraction went how it went. Uh, you know, he has a son now, but it was a distraction nonetheless. And Otto's out of there. Yeah. I think, uh, I think a very important part of that was him talking about how, how, how convenient he was when he was there when, um, was it uh, was it Baylor? Baylor, you know, was was named the heir and the hand, and how you know unfortunate uh, it was for Baylor that he that he dies, uh, but so fortunate for Otto and um, and how Otto has taught him how to be king, and you know, and it's almost it's almost a slap into Otto's face. Uh, him saying that he taught him how to be king because he cl very clearly did not s catch Otto 101. And that's to scheme <laughs> and always be playing yeah. <laughs> and always be kind of inserting your opinion in different places. So, I mean, it's it's kind of it, it really has seemed like for the past 50, what is it, 14 years at this point past when, when he the Great Council, 14 years of him being king. And he's really learned nothing at this point. He's learned, you know, not 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 realizing that he's basically been kind of puppeteered by this one one guy um, and not listened to other good counsel that he's gotten over the years. And he's kind of finally seen it. I guess it took his teenage daughter kind of throwing in his face saying, hey, you know, I'll do what I'm supposed to do if you do what you're supposed to do. Um, and, and it's fine. And it's like one of those things where, you you know, you've always kind of known something in the back of your head. And finally, he just got to finally throw it in Otto's face. And, um, you know, Otto yeah. does does his best to uh, all hurt puppy impression. But, you know, gears are already turning in Otto's head. He's already kind of oh, figuring yeah. out how to how he needs yeah. to move from this. Yeah. yeah. And, and we see once again that it takes the interference of someone else for Viserys to act like the king he needs to be he to make it to actually make a decision and not just kind of be like well maybe let's see what happens it takes his daughter to step in and be like all right cool you do you or I'll, I'll do what you need but you need to take care of your own house first when you're king in this yeah. time frame when you're king in this time frame nobody should feel comfortable enough rolling up in in your room at 9 a.m in the morning to tell you that your daughter just got banged last night at a brothel, dude. Like you've got to, you got to <laughs> tighten up, you got to tighten up the ship, buddy. Okay. That's like a wait till noon type situation. Like dudes had breakfast, like dudes had coffee, like, yeah. And you tell him when he's at the throne room from one end of it. So he can't grab you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt, what'd you think about the, uh, the auto scene the, at the very end? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We, for a long time, we've been wondering who wrote the pink letter, uh, you know, in the main series, but we found out who wrote the pink slip. Okay. Cause Viserys. <laughs> <can't>, <laughs> all right. You know, right. Boom. Get Boom. out of here. Buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you so, fought, so that was good. You fought, man. Otto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Buddy. But, uh, <laughs> no, it was, no, it was no, it was it was a good scene because, you know, Viserys has really been 
he really is kind of like this season. He's kind of the Ned Stark. He's kind of like the key figure and everything is sort of happening around him. And so to see his sort of back and forth and where he's going, because everybody, everything that's going on ultimately is kind of just even the way they're telling it is run through him or it surrounds him or it's causing him to make his decision so for him to now sort of back damon even though he tells damon to get out of here uh tells him to get out too you know then he still fires auto and he's like you know i've i've realized the errors of my, of my ways by having you around for so long yeah um but all right uh so we've kind of gone through all the you know the major is there anything else what any overall notes about this episode that you guys have all i've got one thing Lionel Strong season, baby. Let's go. Let's go. It's it's old Lionel Strong. <laughs> it's his time to his time to step up to the plate and shine like we all know that he can. So that's all I've got to say. Yeah, uh just like the episode yeah, the, the episode um just in general, episode episode 4. I mean, every episode of this show so far has been just awesome. It's been so Yeah. It, it's they've all been so good, even like episodes like this, where the action is a little lower. There still was some action. The dialogue feels weighted. It feels important. It feels like it matters. Um, you can see like you can like almost you can just feel the tension and all of the different um, threads that are, you know, slowly, slowly building and building and building. And it's going to build to something that's going to, you know, we've seen the trailers where something's going to happen by the end of the season. It's going to be like a huge just meltdown. Uh, and you yeah. can just feel it slowly ri- uh, rising each week. Yeah. Um, and I think we are at the point now in the show because people see it coming. Uh, whether you're a book reader or maybe if you're a book reader, you probably know a little bit more about it. But if you're just a show watcher, you, you see this, the, the division happening. Uh, so we it's we're at this point in the show now where we can start asking guests this. Uh, Matt, uh, team black or team green? Oh, for me, I'm well, I'm I mean it's an I'm team black, right? Because you know it's it's like when when Allison talks to when Allison asks Rhaenyra about like oh did you hook up with your uncle or whatever and she says something about like it's the Targaryens have weird traditions. It's like oh, the Targaryens are kings, okay? So yeah. <laughs> that's just how it is. Yeah, so no, I'm ultimately, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm team black. But um, I do think that they are doing a good job, especially for even the non-book readers, of making Team Green, even though they don't even realize, you know, what it is yet. The people who are only right. show watchers. I think they are gi- they are giving you legit reasons, actually, to sort of potentially be on Team Green. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think um, that's... I, that's uh, yeah, I think as a... yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to agree. Like, you know, I mean, and I, honestly, I think it's going to give us some reasons, you know, for those that all have only really read the history books. And I think that there's going to be some little tidbits and stuff in there that you're like, oh, my side really did that. You know, I mean, come on. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm team black as well. But I think that that they have done a good job of dividing the oops sorry dividing the group as well kind of keeping them separated so you kind of know later on when which side these these folks are going to kind of land on with leaving a few in the middle that are going to be a little bit ambiguous to that to that siding and where it's going to be yeah i um you know for the longest time i could never really pick a side i was always kind of just like in between you know cuz a i would have naturally gone team black but man i'm I, I'm a I'm I'm all aboard t- Team Baratheon, so I kind of you know yeah. followed them into hell at high water, and they were Team Green. So I was like, ah. But honestly, even after watching the show, I think you know I, I think Otto's character is so easily hateable for me, which is a good thing. The acting's amazing. I, I mean, Otto as a character is amazing. He you should not like Otto. Um, kind of pushes me fully into to Team Black. So I think that all three of us are Team Black. Uh, you know, we're going to start keeping a little bit of tally, see, you know, how many team greens we actually get. Um, because I, I honestly, I mean, maybe we'll get some, I'm thinking with the way the show is, we're not going to get that many. And we'll have a lot of book readers and the book, the book, at least in my mind, the book tends to, to make one side seem cooler and more fun. I mean, you know, I guess we, we're not going to get into it. Uh, but, uh, 
But I mean, I'm just so excited to, to be here. But I, you know, I'm also excited for all right. of the spinoffs and and what we're gonna get. I love the the Blackwood Bracken thing that's gonna kind of hopefully spin off into, uh, you know, the Blackfire Rebellion right. when that we get at some point, which is right. really what I wanted to be told. So I, I'm I'm super jazzed how right. well this is being done. And and yeah. and and to, and to be fair, I think one of the cool things about it is you can make an argument that actually both sides win in the end. No, like yeah. what comes after you can make an you can make an argument yeah. that like both sides win or you can make it you can actually sort of or make an argument well, that this side really wins or this side wins. I yeah. think I think you could probably say both side loses almost. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you, you can actually make that argument the, too. You can make that yeah. probably <laughs> solely the best argument um to be made. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, before we do head off uh you know for uh listeners out there, since we last recorded, it seems like it's uh, pretty confirmed about the Jon Snow show coming up, uh, at least in pre-production. Uh, you know, like we said, like we said, last, like we joked about last week. I'm sure there's a lot of things in pre-production right. uh, that have been quote unquote confirmed. Let's see what actually gets made. Um, I don't know exactly. I I kind of hope that the Jon Snow show is just like a. I want them to do just like a a, a 90s sitcom style where it's just him <laughs> living his life of beyond the wall. Right. Have nothing to do with Game of Thrones. Just, just you know, another day in the every, life of, of a wild Well, every day there's like a crazy <laughs> problem. Like he'll walk up and Sam's under an icicle and he's like, what are you doing, Sam? He's like, yeah. I can't move out from under this right. icicle or I die. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's all nicely wrapped up in 25 minutes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but um all right matt thank you so much for joining us hey, uh, for having me, guys. everyone make awesome. sure uh, of course and everyone make sure to check them out on bend the knee the uh, link will be in the show description um for brandon and matt uh i'm bobby this has been home pod office thank you so much for hanging out with us and we'll see you again next time peace